morning everybody, fantastic to see you all again. So I've got to say that in last week's video actually, when I was editing it, I just hadn't said it for some reason. Anyway, morning. So composition, it's something we all struggle with. And I actually recently did a survey just to try and help me out a little bit with my videos and which direction I should take, I asked quite a lot of questions in there. Um, one of them was, what areas of photography do you struggle with and you want to see videos on? And by a long way, composition came top, which was no real surprise. Um, and I'm going to use that survey to, to improve my video, so thanks if you responded to that. I had a few thousand responses, that's, that's brilliant. Okay, so composition is something that I've always struggled with, I think a lot of other photographers always struggle with, and most of the time I go out, get back, and I'm disappointed with my results. I've probably not stood in the right place, I thought, why didn't I just look at, look at it differently? Um, and, you know, more often than not, I don't get good results. So, you know, when I show my good photos on Instagram, don't think that's the photos that I get all the time, because it just isn't. Um, but there are some things that I've learnt in the field that I think make composition a little bit easier. And the seven, surprise, surprise, that I wanted to share with you today. Now this is really the, 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 the points that I think you can do when you're in the field, the things that you can think about when you're out there with your camera that will make a difference to almost all your shots. So I wanted to share those with you now. So the first one is, wide angle and what you should do with your wide angle lens. Now, what you've got to remember is that when you shoot with a wide angle lens, it's more difficult to get a good composition because you've got more in the shot and the more things you have in the shot, obviously the more difficult it is to be able to compose them into some sort of order. But a top tip for wide angle is when you're standing um, be, you know, behind your tripod or holding your camera, um, make sure you're high up. So I see a lot of people, especially when I'm on workshops, that they'll, they'll set up a composition thinking they're going to do some foreground and they'll set their tripod up really low down. But what you want to be is, is quite high up. So if you take this shot, for instance, which is one of my favourites um, from Scotland a couple of years ago, this was a handheld shot. I've spoken about it before. So I was at eye level, turning my camera down just to get the foreground. The reason that you want to be a little bit higher up is that you want to create some sort of depth to the image. You want to be able to have a connection between the foreground, the midground, and the distance. It's exactly the same. I was at I have a tripod in most of these at eye height. That's why I like to have quite a big tripod so I can have it at, at eye height. Also from my back, because bending down is more difficult. But it just means that you have depth. You connect the foreground, the midground, and the distance. So here's a few more examples. This was the lily pad one from last week. This was another one of some fern, and then the wall, and then the road, and then the other midground leading into the distance. This one. It's just this little furry bush. I, I seem to like furry bushes at the moment. <laughs> Sounds wrong again. Uh, <laughs> gonna have words with Photo Tripper. Okay, so, um, yep, so th this little furry bush was good foreground, but then I had the midground because I was high up, and then this one of the sea in Lofoten. Again, I, want, I, I didn't want um, just to be the foreground, and then the mountains, I wanted to connect the ocean through to those distant mountains to give a sense of depth to the image. So that's the first tip. So the second tip is just a quick one and it is all about avoiding the drop off as I call it. So you see a lot of shots on Instagram like this one where there's a person on the edge of a drop off looking over the distant scene. It looks fantastic and you think oh, I'm going to recreate that or I really like that. I like that composition. It does look good when somebody is looking out over the ocean or something like that. But as soon as you take that person away, it doesn't look as good, it doesn't look as powerful. You lose something when you take that person away from the, the edge of, of, of the shot. Take this shot that I took in the Lake District where I, I, I think it was for my thumbnail or something I took the shot and that's me in the scene. You take me away and there's a drop off. So there's nothing connecting that foreground to the distance. And what you want to do is have something that's connecting the foreground to the midground to distance to have a story through the scene. So that's the other thing you can think about when you're in the field. What I'd like to do is just try and find a position where you can have some of that foreground, but if there's a drop off, you can maybe just angle it and, and then shoot across the drop off. So you, the drop off sort of is, is, is a diagonal leading to some mid ground and then the distant mountain. Okay, the third thing is if it doesn't add to the image, just don't include it. So everything in that image should 
add to the image, it should make the image better. If it doesn't make it better, move, get into a different position. So for instance, take this shot, I was trying to take this tree, I really like the daffodils. So I was, I was in two minds, so that was always gonna go wrong. I, it, you know, what was I taking? Was I taking the daffodils or the tree? So I, I soon realized that the daffodils didn't add to the image, so I recomposed my shot, took this one, it worked so much better, everything in that image added to, to, to that image. So the rocks gave a sense of what the, 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 the tree was growing out of, they connected to the rocks in the mid-ground and the distance, and it just worked a lot better. So think about that, think about your image when you're framing it up and then think, is there anything in this image that I can remove by recomposing it, zooming in or zooming out? It's a good idea. The fourth thing is about a longer lens and how that can improve your composition. It tends to be easier to shoot, and I did a video here on long lens um, photography. Uh, compositions with a long lens, I mean, I, I like doing wide angle shots, don't get me wrong, but it is easier with a long lens. So take this one for instance. So this is in the Faroe Islands, which was just stunning. We were walking back, the sun was setting, you could just see it dropping over the horizon. It was absolutely amazing, but I also liked this, this rock formation on the left hand side and I wanted to include that in. And I took a shot that was slightly closer in, but in between the two. Um, and actually when I got back in, into Lightroom, I realized that what I should have done is zoomed a lot further in and captured this shot. That, that was the killer shot of this scene. That's the thing that's got the strongest composition. And that would have been around about 180 millimeters. So what I should have done is swap, swap my lenses and zoomed in and taken that. Now, luckily, I've got lots of megapixels to play with and I can still get a good shot out of it. But I always like to get as much as I can optically without having to do any digital zoom. But it's a good top tip. Use a long lens, it helps you crop in on it and remove those distractions. It's something you can do really easily in the field. Okay, the next thing is all about the bottom third of the frame. Um, it's something that's really important. You, you need to think about that bottom third of the frame. Your eye tends to look into the image from the bottom up. Um, and if that bottom third, third of the frame gets too complicated or the distracting elements, it tends to ruin the composition of your shot. So a really simple example is this. This is a waterfall. You can see the bottom of the waterfall. I've got a bit of a distracting white element here that doesn't really work. But then when I just moved around a little bit, it's actually the same waterfall, believe it or not, this. I think it's just slightly up and then on, on, on um, the left a little bit. I've got a much more uniform bottom third of the frame and it makes the whole image easier to look at and more pleasing on the eye. It's exactly the same with the two shots that I showed earlier about using a wide angle lens and having simplicity or repeating patterns in the bottom third of the frame, the lily, the water, those um, grasses in Scotland, they're all the same. So if you can think about that bottom third and think, is it simple? Has it got repeating patterns? Are there anything that's distracting in it? If you, if, if, you, if you tick all those boxes or cross the box if it's distracting, then you're gonna get a good image. Okay, onto the sixth thing, and this is something that's a little bit more difficult to do um, because sometimes you forget more than anything, but separation of elements. And that might be separation of elements in terms of similar colors that are crossing over or branches that are crossing over the horizon. And you know, I could, I could do a whole video about this, but I want this video to be fairly quick and just you know concise. This is a shot I took on my iPhone in a field um, just behind me, in fact, and it was a really nice sort of dewy morning. First one I took is this one where I was actually at eye level. This is an example of moving down, helping to create separation of that distant tree. So by moving down, what I did is I separated where the tree branches are touching the branches in the distance. Now in this case, I've also got separation through the fog as well, so I might have got away with it, but I still think this second shot is um, a more pleasing and stronger composition. You, know, you can also think about separation of elements throughout the scene. So in this one, this was in Lofoten, this island, I couldn't quite get high enough to create enough separation between the island and the water on the left-hand side here. So I ended up taking this composition by just removing the island because I couldn't get separation. So sometimes you can get separation and that improves it. Sometimes you think, well, I'm not gonna be able to get separation between those two things. So I need to move around and take a different shot. And then this one, I got separation through just putting this tree, this autumn tree with this beautiful graduation of colors up the tree, which is so interesting. I found it so interesting 
that at the bottom of the tree the leaves have dropped off and then they've turned a little bit more right at the top of the tree, they've not turned yet. But I separated it by putting it against a dark background. Now it was a little bit difficult to do this, I had to end up holding my tripod up um, above me to get the right height, but it made it possible to separate the tree from the background, which made a much better shot. The seventh point is all, all about just moving small distances, really small distances that make really big differences in the image. And this is probably the most important point here because I guarantee you that every shot you take, if you just move left, right, up or down, that should look right for you, um, then you, you, you'll, you'll improve your image. So take this one, I've shown it in a previous video, this was in Mamtor, I'll show two from Mamtor in fact. So here you can see I'm on the path, it's not a particularly great shot because there's a lot of distracting elements. I moved a little bit to the left, still distracting elements, a little, I moved a little bit forward and had a nice foreground and then I got these really nice grasses catching the light. All this was in a few meters um, just to get that right composition by moving just small distances can help. And then this one on the other side of the fence, all I did was move about that far my camera um, and then I just covered up that path and it created a more simple composition and massively improved the overall image. So these seven compositional tips are all very simple. What I recommend is just copy them down. Um, in the description I've listed the seven so you can just copy, paste that into your notes on your phone and then you can remember them when you're out there. Anyway, I hope that helps. It's a really, really quick video. I'm actually now in Scotland um, recording more footage, running workshops. So there's gonna be some really exciting footage coming um, of me in the field rather than in the studio. But I do like doing these videos. I think they're helpful. They're more educational um, than, than inspirational when I'm out on, on, on the mountains. But thanks ever so much for watching. If you've got any top tips for composition in the field, so things that you can do in the field, then drop them in the comments below and then we can create a really good resource. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Okay, until next Sunday, bye.